The Outer Worlds is one of the most unique RPGs in all of gaming. This might sound hyperbolic, but with the cult classic now available on PlayStation Plus, I recently decided to revisit Obsidian's spacefaring adventure for the first time since it was originally released five years ago. After playing through the campaign and both DLC expansions, my main takeaway is that this game is far better than I ever gave it credit for. I remember enjoying the game in 2019, but for whatever reason, it didn't leave much of a lasting impression on me. This time around though, it was the complete opposite. The Outer Worlds is a delight. Yes, the game has satisfying shooting mechanics and solid RPG systems, but what stood out to me the most in my playthrough was the uniqueness and the charm that the Outer Worlds exudes in each and every moment of gameplay. Perhaps my changed perception here is in part due to the fact that the last space RPG I played was Starfield, a game that left me feeling disappointed and empty in more ways than one. But regardless of the reason, today I want to give the Outer Worlds some love and talk about the ways in which this game stands out in a packed RPG landscape even in the year of 2024. Whether you missed this game when it first released, or are like me and played it once and moved on, The Outer Worlds is without a doubt worth experiencing. Let me explain why. First, let's talk about The Outer Worlds universe itself. The game takes place in the Halcyon system, where corporations, and specifically the board, rule over everything. Society is extremely advanced in this reality, with all sorts of futuristic technology at its fingertips, but in order to get to that point, everyone has been worked to death and is completely miserable. For example, Pavardi, one of the player's party members, is unfamiliar with the concept of a weekend. Pretty bleak existence, if you ask me. The anti-capitalism message here has been done plenty of times by other games, but what sets the Outer Worlds apart from those other titles is the hilarious bluntness of that message. The Outer Worlds is not subtle, but that lack of subtlety is where so much of the game's charm and hilarity comes from. In the Outer Worlds, the Halcyon system is basically a character in itself. It's bright and colorful, and at first glance looks like it might not be the worst place to live. But as you continue to play the game, you realize that the initial brightness is nothing more than phony, corporate manufactured bullshit, like everything else in its world. As you probably could have guessed about my earlier statement about a character not knowing what a weekend is, the people in Halcyon are obsessed with work and their status. On numerous occasions, citizens will refer to the unemployed like they're a stain on society. The unemployed are dangerous and unpredictable, truly the worst of the worst in the eyes of most Halcyon citizens. This obsession with work and status might sound bleak and depressing, and it undoubtedly would be in real life, but in a make-believe universe, it leads to some truly hilarious moments and characters. Take Sanjar Nandi, for example. Sanjar is the CEO of Monarch Stellar Industries and someone the player comes across when passing through the town of Stellar Bay. Sanjar is obsessed with gaining the board's favor to the point where he is willing to do anything to put himself on their radar. At one point in time, he sends the player into dangerous territory to wipe some sensitive information off of a terminal. It's implied that this is extremely confidential and important, but when the player gets to the terminal, they are met with nothing more than a poor performance review of Sanjar from a previous boss. Moments like these abound in the game, as the complete lunacy of the world's corporate, capitalist hellscape injects every moment of the player's journey with comedy and the unshakable feeling that this world is like no other. And as charming and fun as the world is, I think the game's cast of characters is even better. I already mentioned the great side character that is Sanjur Nandi, and the game is filled with similar examples, but where the Outer Worlds really shines in terms of character work is with its companions. I don't want to spend too much of this video shitting on Starfield, but Starfield's bland and cliche companions were one of my many, many issues with that game. The companions in the Outer Worlds, on the other hand, are the exact opposite. There are six of them that you can recruit, and while that obviously isn't a large number, this is a classic example of quality over quantity, because man, these characters are fantastic. Outside of maybe some extremely narrative-driven games, these companions feel like some of the most vivid and real characters in any video game I've ever played. They all have distinct personalities and quirks with their own motivations and intricate backstories. For example, let's take a look at Pavardi, the first and perhaps most beloved companion in the game. Pavardi is a mechanic from a dump of a city named Edgewater. She's sweet and earnest, but also very naive and socially awkward due to her secluded upbringing. 
Pavardi is complex and has enough distinct personality traits to actually feel like a real person. Compare this to a game like Starfield, where most party members felt more or less like personifications of a certain trait or role rather than real, breathing characters. To help with this fleshing out process, each character has a fairly lengthy companion questline to follow. This is certainly not something unique to the Outer Worlds, but most of these companion quests are some of the best and most thoughtful I've seen. Sticking with Pavardi, her questline revolves around her developing a crush on another mechanic the party meets in their travels, and then helping her win over her affection. Throughout this questline, the player learns more about Pavardi, including her potentially being asexual, as she confides in the player that she's never been one to enjoy physical affection. Another layer to a deep and nuanced character. What helps this questline stand out is that it's so character focused. There's basically no action oriented gameplay throughout the entire thing. Just the player helping Pavardi drunkenly talk through her feelings and then eventually helping her prepare for the big moment of asking her crush out. That's the questline's culmination. Not some giant shootout or showdown with some formidable foe, just helping Pavardi get over her fears and risk massive heartbreak to ask her crush out. Because really, is there any more formidable foe than potential heartbreak? All of this illustrates how the Outer Worlds put such a huge emphasis on its characters. By the time this particular questline was over, Pavardi felt like a legitimate companion to me, not just a combat pawn like some other game's companions can feel. Again, looking at you, Starfield. Not every companion quest in the game is as unique as Pavardi's, but all of them are meaningful and shine in different ways. For example, at first, Neoka's questline seems like a simple quest for revenge. She wants to kill the creature responsible for killing her old crew and bury all their tags in one place. Pretty standard video game quest stuff. However, as you progress, you continue to learn more and more about Neoka and the family that she lost. And by the end of it, much like Pavardi, she seems like such an incredibly nuanced and intricate character. Anyway, like I said, companion quests are something we've seen a million times before. But the manner in which the Outer Worlds pulls them off puts the ones in this game in a class of their own. Again, making the Outer Worlds feel like a truly unique experience. And speaking of that experience, let's talk about something else that helps it stand out. It's brevity. Most RPGs these days are huge time sinks. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing I love more than getting lost in a 75 hour RPG epic. But I also think that there's room in the genre for smaller, more compact experiences. And that's where the Outer Worlds shines. By RPG standards, this game is downright short with the main story being finishable in around 15 hours. The game's various planets aren't particularly large, but that works in the game's advantage in many ways, as most locales feel compact enough that you're never too far from something interesting. That's not to say there's no trekking through the occasional barren stretch of planet in the outer worlds, but those instances are fairly uncommon here, especially when compared to many other large RPGs. You won't find yourself wandering across an empty planet with nothing of interest but a procedurally generated cave in this game. All right, that's the last Starfield insult in here, I promise. The brevity and compactness of the Outer Worlds makes the game feel so much more approachable than many of its RPG contemporaries. People who just want to experience a cool and hilarious space adventure can get in and out in under 20 hours. And people like me, who do want to get lost in a massive RPG, can spend hours completing all the side content, because there's a lot of that here as well. This best of both worlds approach seems less and less common with RPGs these days. I mean, look at the year 2024 alone. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth have been two of the biggest releases of the year. And while I loved both of those games, there's no denying that somebody with limited time on their hands is going to struggle to finish them. Even without doing much side content, the primary story of each of those games is going to take most likely north of 50 hours for the average player to complete. I love that sort of epic adventure as much as anyone, but like I said, shorter, more compact RPGs like The Outer Worlds provide a wonderful alternative for time strapped players or just people who want to play a variety of different games. The brevity of The Outer Worlds is another huge boon for the game, and again, helps set it apart from many of the other RPGs out there, especially nowadays. The Outer Worlds is truly a breath of fresh air in the modern RPG landscape. It doesn't necessarily reinvent the wheel or do any one specific thing that is going to completely blow your mind, but its combination of remarkably nuanced characters and one of the most unique and hilarious settings in gaming helps it stand out quite a bit. Combine that with its bite-sized length when compared to other modern RPGs, and you get something that feels like nothing else on the market.
making The Outer Worlds an experience that every RPG lover should try at some point or another. And as an added bonus, if you're a corporate drone like I am, it might make you feel just a little bit better about your profession. At least we know what weekends are, right? <laughs>